Hello Internet, Steve again with another Unity Asset Store review. Um, so it's been a while since I posted a video, uh, posted one of these. I have another video explaining why. If you want to know why, you can go watch that. Um, otherwise, we're going to jump right into it. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the Medieval Street Environment by Freshcan 3D. Uh, this particular asset retails for $39.99 at the time of writing this particular review. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's just go over sort of um, my, you know, criteria. Uh, so quality, overall quality, I think is not bad. Uh, actually, if you look at the visual quality, I think it's fantastic. Um, there is an issue with the... Um, colliders on the assets, which I haven't been able to work through why it happens. Um, that could go into quality. That could also go into, like, workability. Um, so I am going to pass it on quality. I mean, the asset looks really nice. I'm running it on, I believe, the built-in renderer right now. Um, I believe this is built-in. It's, it's either built-in or URP. Um, but either way, it's not HDRP, and it still looks gorgeous. So quality passes. Uh, modularity and workability. We'll, we'll stick that, um, that uh, um, uh, collider issue under here. I'll talk about that a little bit now, and then I'll sort of go into it inside of um, the engine as well, near, or in, in, inside of the demo scene near the end. But essentially... Um, there is an issue where it, it for some reason it is not playing nice with my character controller now one of the reasons that i use the character controller that i use is because it's very like streamlined no bullshit in the overwhelming majority of art asset packs i can drop it in push play and it just works um when i get into the actual like running through the demo level you'll see that i'm not doing any wall running or anything like that, or maybe I'll try it at the end so you can just kind of see what happens. But there is an issue with the um, with the colliders that, again, I, I just haven't been able to figure out. Um, so uh, aside from that, um, modularity, I, I do think that the uh, modularity of the actual asset is really good, which is unfortunate because the workability of it, uh, given that that particular collider issue, um, I had to go through a bunch of nonsense to retag everything, and uh, there's there's just some weird issues out of the box that make it where you have to dick around with it more than I would like um, to make it workable. Uh, so, yeah, bottom line is, uh, you know, modularity, it's good. Workability, it's not good. Um, so uh, I'm going to give it, like, I'm assuming I'll be able to figure out that collider issue at some point or another, so I'll pass it here, but just understand that there are those caveats. Uh, support and serviceability, this kind of goes into that particular collider issue as well on the serviceability end. Um, I... Like, other people have said that they have had good responses from the developer. I honestly, um, I haven't gotten a response yet. I, I did reach out to them a few months ago uh, when I first started looking at this particular asset, um, and I, I haven't gotten a response. Now, that doesn't mean, uh, there's, there's a million reasons why that could be. I will typically reach out once and then... Unless it's something I'm using in active development, I won't pursue it. <laughs> um, but, uh, and I'm not using this in active development, just to be clear. Um, so, you know, it could be it got lost in their inbox. It could be that my Exchange server got, you know, a little wonky. Who knows? Um, other people have said they have no problems getting responses, so I'm going to take them at their word. Um and I'll, I'll give it a pass, too. Value, I do think at that price point, uh, it is worth it. Um, I mean, just the graphical fidelity of this 
uh, for 40 bucks and the amount of stuff you get um, and what you can do with that stuff, I do think 40 bucks is worth it. Um, so, yeah, the value passes. Uh, my biggest issue with it really is that, that collider issue, which makes it not really production usable for me. But, but again, it's something that if I pursued the developer really heavily or if I really took a lot of time to dig in to try to figure it out, I could, I could probably figure it out. It's just, um, you know... Yeah, I, I, I like stuff to work out of the box, so I pay for it. Now, now for that price point, again, now if this were like a $100 asset, then I, I'd be a lot more pissed, and I'd probably give it a fail on the value. But I think that for the price, all things considered, uh, given that I really only have the one major complaint, I do think that the value is there. So let's hop right in here. Um, so I'm going to take this one a little slower than I normally would just because of that collider issue. Um, so we'll just go. Ba, 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 ba. You'll notice that all of the buildings do have interiors. Um, there's a decent amount of clutter like this stuff, you know, stack logs and whatnot, barrels, uh, you know, butter churns. Um, if you really zoom in on some of the stuff, you can see that the fidelity is like, eh, you know, it's not HDRP. But again, I'm not running this on HDRP. So if if you just look at like this right here from the, oh, and actually I want to pop that guy on. Um, if you just look at this, from this standpoint, like back here, this looks really nice, right? When you get in a little bit closer, you can see that there's some like, you know, it's not, Again, it's not HDRP, but again, it's not trying to be HDRP. So you got some awnings there and stuff like that that you can use. Um, again, a lot of sort of recycling of some of that, some of those set pieces. Um, and and again, I don't want to get too close to these buildings because I don't want to get caught in the mesh until the or caught in the collider until the end. So I'm going to try to stay away, but you can see all of them do have interiors. Some more awnings and stuff like that. stuff like that some more like fencing and things like that some more clutter this this asset doesn't have an abundance of clutter like I would normally like to see but honestly that's okay um, it is not the end of the world so this is back where we first cut across so I'm gonna go over here to this building and you'll sort of see probably as soon as I go inside There we go. So I jump and now I'm stuck in the floor. And so you can you can hear that I'm trying to jump. Um, that's again, I, I haven't figured out why that happens, and it could be a lot of reasons. I'm not gonna go um, I'm not gonna lose sleep over it right now. Um, again, it's probably something that you could figure out. So there's an overview scene. Let's just run through that real quick, um, and then we will cut it. And I do want to say this, too. Um, so you can see that pretty much everything does have LODs, um, so that's nice. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. So they have a few pre-configured buildings. These buildings are made up of the, oops, of the modular assets. Um, so that's nice so to sort of see what you can build with it. Um, so up here, obviously, this is that clock piece that's right there. Um, so let's 
kind of do a zoom through of a couple of these. A lot of these pre-built buildings were in there, but you can build your own buildings with the, those modular set pieces over there, which is something else that makes me like really happy about this asset and why I do think that despite the, um, I'll see this one doesn't even have a collider on it, but all of them in the demo scene do. Um, all of them in the demo scene do, so I don't know quite why that's being stupid. But anyways, um, so interior is looking good. Do, do, do. So I'm not going to go through every one of the, the pre-configured buildings. You kind of get the idea. But here, so let's go into the modular pieces. So let's start actually over here. So here's that clock tower piece. This is one piece. Um, that's used up there in those. Uh, but then you've got these sorts of, um, these like uh, uh, ceiling, you know, portions or, or roof portions rather. What I like about the way that they did this is they have, if you notice, they have two variants. <laughs> so it allows you, if you just want to be lazy or whatever, and you just want that sort of variant then, or you, you just don't want to, you know, customize it at all, you have that option. But then they have this open one, which allows you to take these cutout pieces and sort of make your own. I like to see that sort of thing. That to me shows a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, you know, care and, and thought put into how they're modularizing out their, you know, asset. Um, so that makes me happy to see. Uh, you've got some more roofs here. And you've got, uh, you know, cutouts on these roofs for duh, 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 where for these guys. So if you want to make more unique outside buildings and stuff like that, you have that ability. Um, these are cutouts. These are cutouts that can be used uh, over here with that, or um, you can also extend them out. Uh, where's the other piece? There's another one that allows you to use that. Um, I am not actually seeing it. Uh, oh, you know what? I'm being stupid. No, I'm not. You, there should be another one like this that allowed that has a larger cutout where you can make sort of an X roof. I'm not seeing it in here actually now that I'm sort of looking, but that does exist in the actual asset. Um, so then we've got actually let's go over here. Let's start with the bigger walls. So we've got an ample amount of wall options, plenty of windowed options, plenty of non-windowed options. <laughs> All of these have fronts and backs, so they have interior and exterior um, solutions. You have, if you want to make your own clock wall by not using that guy, you can do that. Uh, you've got larger uh, baseboard ones. So typically these would be for the first level and then these would be for upper levels. Um, so you have an abundant, uh, I shouldn't say abundance, you've got two door options. Um, and then you've got, so these guys, this guy could also be used in a cutout like right here. Um, so then cover those, we've got a couple of different entry stairwells. Um, this could be used as entry stairwell as well. Excuse me, you've got interior, um, like siding and stuff like that, which is nice. Uh, you have interior posts or poles, so foundation uh, pieces. Uh, these would be used along the tops of buildings. You want to just make your own roofs uh, instead of using these guys. That is a, that is an option in here. Um, here's where the clutter gets in. So it's like a hammer rack. Uh, you got some shields. Here's an awning. Uh, a couple other awnings. Or really, just that. These would be used more for like uh, open windows and stuff like that. Uh, another awning, a long awning. So here are those um, uh, log piles. I think, yeah, those are on the lods. So uh, a couple log piles, um, gears for the inside of the clock tower, <coughs> excuse me, uh, and, that, and more gears for the clock towers. You could use those for other things as well. Um, uh, cages, again, just more clutter, or not cages, weights rather. Uh, this is for like, uh, again, the clock tower, if you've ever seen the inside of a clock tower and you got your pendulums and stuff like that. 
So this is all like from I think here pretty much back all all these different gear pieces are all you know clock tower related um you you saw this one in there a few times this ladder uh you got some edging here um, broken ladders more edging so then you have your floors and your ceilings so you've got a couple of different size solutions for that which is nice to see. So if you want to batch out larger chunks, you can do it. Or if you want to have more finite grad, uh, granule control of your level design, you have that as well. A couple of pieces of ivy and shrubbery. That's not really what this pack is about, but you have it if you want it. Uh, you have some a couple of different door options. You've got a couple of like regular, you know, peasant doors. You've got a nicer not peasant door, and then you've got a pretty, you know, effed up door here. Um, some more fencing here, fencing, fencing, and then some barrels and stuff like that. Here's that churn. Uh, again, more edging and baseboards here, and then you've got chimneys. Uh, oh, and then this guy. I don't really know what you would use this for other than if you were going to make like a watchtower out, outside. You could, use, you could do something like that. And then you've got more uh, brick edging for, you know, some semblance of... Um, um, you know, uniqueness and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, all in all, you know, I do think that this pack is worth the money. I, I will, at some point, I'm sure I'll probably try to use this as a, as an actual solution, um, but, or as an actual production, you know, asset. But uh, as of right now, until I can figure out why that, why those colliders are not playing nice with my character controller. I that is upsetting, but that's really the only thing. Other than that, it's a it's a good asset for a good price. And honestly, you could roll your own you can just roll your own um you know you can roll your own uh, uh collider solutions if you really need to. There are options to get around that just out of the box um those those colliders don't work. So that's my thought on this asset. Uh, if you have comments or whatever, let me know in the description. Um, if you have this asset and you like it or you've used it, let, you know, feel free to comment and shamelessly plug whatever you used it in. Um, I'm happy to, you know, chat about that stuff. And I will see everyone in the next one. All right.